Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over five worked examples to show you how to do problems involving potential divider circuits, also known as voltage divider circuits. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question one says, what is the voltage across each resistor? So we've got a 12 volt battery, and we've got two 50 ohm resistors in series. Well, the first thing we want to do is start by labeling the resistors to keep you right. So I'm gonna move from left to right and call the left one number one, and the one on the right number two. It then says, find RT, then IT, then V1. So find the total resistance, then the total current, and then the voltage V1 across this resistor R1. And once we know what V1 is, we can work out what V2 is. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 50 ohms and R2 is 50 ohms. So we get RT equals R1 plus R2 equals 50 plus 50, which equals 100 ohms. Now to find the total current, IT is what we're trying to find. VS is 12 volts and RT is 100 ohms that we just worked out. So writing down our equation, we have VS equals IT RT. Rearranging for IT by dividing both sides by RT, we get IT equals VS over RT, which equals 12 over 100, which equals 0.12 amps. And lastly, to find the voltage across V1, we've got V1 is what we're trying to find, IT is 0.12 amps, and R1 is 50 ohms. So we can say V1 equals IT R1, then put in our numbers to get 0.12 times 50, which gives us six volts across resistor R1. And then in order to find voltage V2 across resistor R2, we need to be aware that V2 will also be six volts since the two resistors have the same value. So both resistors have a voltage of six volts across them. Now you'll notice this was a really long way of doing it, but there's actually a much quicker way that we could have done this as well. And so it says here, that, or we could identify that the resistance values are the same, so the supply voltage will split equally between them, i.e. six volts across each. Question two says that a series circuit is shown below. So we have a 12 volt battery, a 150 ohm resistor, and a 50 ohm resistor in series. It says in part A, calculate the total resistance and then the current in the circuit, just like we had done in question one. So first of all, we're gonna start by labeling the resistors. So I'm gonna call this one number one and this one number two. So it's finding the total resistance, we can write down what we know. We're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 150 ohms and R2 is 50 ohms. So we get RT equals R1 plus R2 equals 150 plus 50, which equals 200 ohms. Now to find the total current, we know that VS is 12 volts and RT is 200 ohms. So we can write down our equation VS equals IT RT and rearrange for IT to get VS over RT. And substituting in the numbers, we get 12 over 200, which if you put into your calculator, you should get an answer of 0.06 amps. Part B then says to calculate the voltage across the 50 ohm resistor. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find V2 because that was what we called number two. We know the total current IT is 0.06 amps and R2 is 50 ohms. So we get V2 equals IT R2 and substituting in the numbers, we get 0.06 times 50, which if you put into your calculator should give you an answer of three volts. Part C then says to calculate the voltage across the 150 ohm resistor. So we could do this in one of two ways, and the first way is a bit longer, but this one is using V equals IR. So writing down what we know from the question, we know we're trying to find V1, we know that IT is 0.06 amps, and R1 is 150 ohms. So writing down our equation, we have V1 equals IT R1, and substituting in the numbers gives us 0.06 times 150, which equals nine volts. Or a quicker way of doing it is using the rule for voltage in a series circuit, which says that the voltage across each of the components must add up to the supply voltage. So we could use some working here of V1 equals Vs minus V2 to find out what V1 is. So that would be 12 minus three, which equals the nine volts. Question three says a potential divider circuit is shown below. So we have two resistors in series there, a 30 ohm and a 120 ohm resistor in series. And you'll notice that this diagram looks a bit different to the one before. So it's almost like this circuit diagram has been flipped on its side compared to the ones that we've looked at so far. And you'll notice that there's no battery here, but what we've got instead is we've actually got a potential difference between this part and this part of 12 volts. So that is the same almost as having a battery there of 12 volts, but we're just ignoring it. So this is zero volts and 12 volts, and we've got two resistors in series. So it's basically just a series circuit turned on its side. 
Part A says to calculate the voltage across the 30 ohm resistor. Well, the first thing we want to do is what we've done in questions 1 and 2, which is to start by labelling the resistors. So in keeping with our labelling from before, we'll call the bottom one number 1 and the upper one number 2. And to find the voltage now across the 30 ohm resistor, we need to first find the total resistance in the circuit, then the total current, and then the voltage V2 because we've called that one number 2, so resistance R2. Well, for the total resistance, we know that R1 is 120 ohms and R2 is 30 ohms. So we get RT equals R1 plus R2 equals 120 plus 30, which equals 150 ohms. To find the total current IT, we know that VS is 12 volts, the supply voltage, and RT, the total resistance, is 150 ohms from what we've just calculated. And writing down the equation, we have VS equals IT RT. Rearranging for IT, we get VS over RT, and substituting in the numbers gives 12 over 150, which gives a total current of 0.08 amps. Now we can use V equals IR again to find the voltage across resistor R2, which is going to be V2. So we're trying to find V2. We know that IT is 0.08 amps and R2 is 30 ohms. So writing down our equation, V2 equals IT R2. Substituting in the numbers, we get 0.08 times 30. And this gives a final answer of 2.4 volts once you put it into your calculator. Part B then says to calculate the voltage across the 120 ohm resistor. So now we know what V2 is and we also know what the supply voltage is. We can do this in one of two ways, just like we did in question two. So the slightly longer way is to use V equals IR. So writing down what we know, we're trying to find V1 this time. We know that IT is 0.08 amps and R1 is 120 ohms. So we get V1 equals IT R1. Substituting in the numbers gives 0.08 times 120. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 9.6 volts. Or the quicker way of doing it is using the rule for voltage in a series circuit, which is saying that V1 is equal to the supply voltage minus V2. So we can say that this is 12 minus 2.4, which equals 9.6 volts as expected. We're now going to look at one worked example for a potential divider circuit when the supply voltage is known. Question 4 says to calculate the potential difference at point X. So you'll notice here we have a similar circuit to what we had in question 3, where we've got our circuit flipped on its side with no battery there. So we've got a potential difference of 12 volts, and we want to find what the voltage or potential difference is at point X here. So the first thing we want to do is just what we've done in every other question, which is start by labeling the resistors. So we'll call this bottom one number one and the upper one number two. Then says that the potential difference at X is equal to the potential difference across the bottom resistor. So if we want to find out what the potential difference or voltage is at this point X here, then we need to find out what the voltage across this bottom resistor is because they're going to be equal. So let's do that. So we're trying to find V1. We know that R1 is 20 ohms. We know that R2 is 40 ohms and Vs is 12 volts. So writing down our equation for potential dividers when the supply voltage is known, we have V1 equals R1 over R1 plus R2 times Vs, so that's our ratio of resistances there times Vs, and substituting in the numbers gives us 20 over 20 plus 40 times 12, and putting this into your calculator gives a final answer of 4 volts. Lastly, we're going to look at one worked example for potential divider circuits when the supply voltage is not known. So question five says to find the voltage across the 40 ohm resistor. So you'll notice here we've got a circuit just like what we've seen before, but we've not got any potential difference or any battery here. So we don't know what the supply voltage is. So we're gonna do what we've done before and start by labeling the resistors. So I'll call this one number one and the upper one number two, just like before. And then writing down what we know from the question, V2 is what we're trying to find because it's the voltage across this 40 ohm resistor that we're being asked for. We know that R2 is 40 ohms. We know that V1 is six volts from that voltmeter there and we know that R1 is 20 ohms. So writing down our equation for potential dividers when the supply voltage is not known, we have V1 over V2 equals R1 over R2. So this is basically your ratio of voltages equals the ratio of the resistances. Substituting in the numbers now, we get six over V2 equals 20 over 40. So what you can do here is one of two things. So you can either cross multiply both sides or you can simplify the right hand side of this fraction first. So I'm going to cross multiply. So I'm gonna take the thing in the top left and multiply it by the thing in the bottom right and make that equal to the thing in the top right multiplied by the thing in the bottom left. So I get 20 V2 equals six times 40. So four sixes are 24 times the 10 is 240 and 240 divided by 20 to get V2 on its own gives me V2 equals 12 volts. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.